Okay, be careful. <laughs> All Leslie, right, where's the Leslie, agenda? Leslie, we have pictures. Pictures, Leslie. <laughs> She'll get around. She's probably having dinner. Give her a break. <laughs> I'm all over the place. Did I lose you? Nope. Can't see you anymore. I don't know where I am. Oh. <laughs> Is Leslie in? She's she there. Appears to be. Well, let me make this smaller because I don't. I I have got 14 Zoom things open, so. All right, let me get rid of this one. I was trying to open the agenda, but, and share it so we can keep on track. I got mine on my phone. Oh, good, you keep us on track. I, I have mine in my hand. Okay, you guys are in charge of keeping us on track then. <clears throat> okay, go. Let's conclude. That's at the end of the agenda. We didn't even start yet. So let's call the meeting to order. Way late, 6.47. You are recording, yeah, you're recording, okay. Okay, what's the first item? Minutes from April 15th. You all read them, I assume. Can I get a motion to accept the minutes from April 15th? I'll accept, I'll make a motion. Who's going to second? I'll second. I wasn't there, so I'll just not second. Yeah, I wasn't there either, so. Ryan L. seconds. All in favor of the, accepting the minutes from April 15th, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Any extent, extension? Well, I abstained. No abstentions. No, and, I do, because I wasn't there. Bosele, you're going to make me type that. Yep, I wasn't there. Well, if you read the minutes, I heard it counts. It does. Yeah, I, and I did read the minutes, but I wasn't there. I had another meeting. Okay, after minutes is. Old <laughs> Thompson Old suffered 100, six, um, 106 months of suffering. Okay, well, that's gonna be a quick one. Just let everybody know, because most of you guys are on the committee. Ladies, I should say. We are moving forward. We've made alternate plans for the first couple of events to do them virtually, making the sashes. We anticipate we'll be in the parade in some format, probably in, in a vehicle or in vehicles, multiple vehicles. So that is moving forward. Um, we had our meeting last night and um, I think there's a good plan in place. So that's enough on that. Okay, hey, good. Update regarding P&Z regulation subcommittee meeting. Uh, well, the comment period is still open until the 15th. Um, you know, I, I have comments from the usual suspects, Alvin, <laughs> Carolyn, Marla, Bernie Davis sent me a few, uh, Al Landry handed me a, a full copy with some handwritten scribbles in it that I have to go through. Um, but, you know, surprisingly little has been returned, which, you know, it is what it is. It's been stated in several places that that's the comment period. And once it's done, we'll move forward. Remind me what the um, next step is. Uh, so we, the, the plan right now is um, to set a subcommittee meeting at the next regular P and Z meeting, which is the 26th, I think. Yep. Um, so that we can discuss the comments and questions received. Uh, and then after that, at the next, uh, if all goes to plan, at the next P&Z regular meeting, which would be close to the end of June, there would be a public hearing so that people could comment during the meeting and then P&Z votes on its own regulations. We so if we can, if we can stay on target at the subcommittee meeting, which I'm going to do everything in my power to make happen by compiling a complete, you know, list of the comments in order and keeping it to those submitted comments, yeah. we should be able to get it done, bring it in on time. I, I am determined to do it. So um, public hearing, um, at the June, as part of the June regular meeting, or set. Yeah, I think meeting. it was. 
Uh, I think it would have to be at that meeting. Um, can't really be any later if we're going to try to, you know, actually have it done by the end of the fiscal year because the fiscal year ends the following week. So if you have the public meeting at at their regular meeting, then they have they're going. You believe they're going to vote that night? Yeah, they just close the public hearing and vote on it. You're, you're okay. <laughs> you're away. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's 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 certainly possible that it could be disrupted by yeah, the public. Okay. However. With the new Zoom platform, it's actually easier to control the chaos because people have to raise their hands to be allowed to speak. There's yep. no cross speech. Um, you know, so it, it can be kept more orderly and it'll just go as long as it needs to go, I guess. Perfect, okay. I have, I have not received additional comments from the group involved at 363 Aquatic Town Farm Road. Oh, As of right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna resubmit their prior comments unless they send me something new, but you know. They've been in the loop anyway, could, right? Me. I personally emailed that group a copy of the draft the day it became publicly available. Yep, okay, all right. Any questions on that or we move on to the next thing? All, set. All right, Charlene, what's next? Update of the River Mill Development Project. I mean, Gumpert's still out there. <laughs> we have a we have a Mizrak meeting on Friday. Um, the uh, Gumpert had presented a request to Rainey and Amy um, a proposal for a structuring of the property tax burden going forward, uh, which only forwarded to uh, Ken Slater. Slater had a colleague review it uh, who returned some sub very substantive comments. I'll admit that I haven't read them all. They, they did look very thorough. Um, I don't think there's any real obstacle to cutting some kind of deal with them. Uh, I think it's just a matter of, you know, hammering down what ultimately it is. And that you're going to keep that on track with her, right? Because I, I, I don't know if that's a priority. I, I, I don't know if that's been a priority or not. I, I've what? been out of that loop. So I don't know what the selectmen have been discussing regarding that. The selectmen have well, not been discussing anything because I don't know anything about it. So it, uh, well, she, she had mentioned that Amy had mentioned that at the last MISRAC meeting, which was a Zoom meeting. Um, I think near the end of that meeting. And then she did share, I can't remember if it was just with me and Janet or with the committee in general. I saw a copy it. of, you did. Okay. So, so that was his proposal. And in the meantime, it's been, you know, forwarded to Slater and we've had comments turned around. So I would say that piece has happened in relatively, you know, good turnaround where it goes from there. I, I don't know. I don't know how much more review it needs. Can you send me a copy of it, please? Uh, yep. I would appreciate but I, it. I imagine she's um, waiting to get that. Uh, well, if it was shared with the MISRAC, then it's public record. Oh, absolutely. No, I, I'm just saying I'm, uh, I, that's fine. I'm just saying is that maybe she hasn't brought it to the Board of Selectmen until there's a, a real clear outline. But it's, it'd be nice if the board had seen what his proposal is so we can think about it where it's not sprung on us at the True. last moment. True, so that way decisions can be made more quickly. So if we have any questions, we can pose them. Yeah. yeah. yeah Obviously, we want that to continue. My... Well, we're um, talking about Mizrac. Uh, what, I don't know where, we, if, I mean, some of us are on that too, but if you wanted to do a, you may have updated the EDC on this as well. I don't know where we overlap, but. Um, where the sidewalk proposal stands. Do you want to just say a few words? Uh, yeah, well, we, we, accepted, um, we accepted a, uh, a vendor, uh, Mizrak did, and then uh, Board of Selectmen voted to authorize the first selectman to sign the contract. So that's all happened. It's been set off. 
uh, now that's the last update that I have. Um, yeah, I'm sure it'll I'm sure it'll come up on Friday. So that was um, that's the the contract for a design for sidewalk from Ross and from to Ross to and the Abbott. intersection with 200 roughly. As far as we can get there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, and they did. Re they reduced. Uh, they reduced the costs without having to reduce the scope by the amount that we'd requested. So they brought it in. I'm sorry, I was looking distracted because I was looking for that email, but I'll have to send it tomorrow. Um, the uh, um, the firm uh, peeled off the four grand, five grand that we were looking to reduce it by, uh, and that's essentially they're not going to be required to come to any um, night meetings in front of, for example, P&Z or the selectmen, I presume that means that um, Janet or I will represent them if anything has to come up uh, in front of those commissions. Um, there shouldn't be anything really anyway. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. So, and they reduced some of those cross sections that uh, Janet had mentioned seemed excessive to her, but all of the other things that we had requested will remain in there. So that's good. That's um, and just so you know, that is coming out of. I'm sure most people know this is coming out of the funds left over from the Brown from the Bar Grant, correct? The bar Grant. That bar that is that essentially is the rest of the Bar Grant money, except for the five grand that is socked away for the wayfinding and whatever little remainder still needs to be paid to Provost and Rivera for Blaine Road. I just submitted the payment request for the first invoice from Provost and Rivera. And that's, that looked like it was about 75% of his, um, his fee from that bid. So that's almost done too. Okay, and that, then that takes us to um, you wait, were wait. working on a, you, well, before we get there, you were working on a grant for, to actually get the sidewalks in, the construction <laughs> grant through NECOG. The lot zip. Yeah, uh, Jim Larkin confirmed. Yeah, uh, Jim Larkin confirmed that uh, Phil Chack at NECOG signed it, which was a necessary signature, and it has been forwarded over to I think that's DOT who reviews it. DOT, just so everybody knows, uh, they do not turn around quickly. I think the estimates we're working with under normal circumstances is they take six to eight months to review. Um, and then they provide a letter of commitment to fund, which essentially means we promise you will be able to do this as soon as we get the money. And then whatever mechanism they use to replenish that fund, once enough money is in it for us, they release it to us. Okay. So it's not quick. No. But um, the review of, the, of our grant proposal can occur while the design work is going on. So it's not like we have to wait for that. It just goes. Right, great. Okay. Um, next on that list, Charlene. Wayfinding project update. So a few of us. Uh, Kelsey forwarded us a PowerPoint earlier this week. Uh, she wants to <clears throat> discuss the PowerPoint. Uh, for a public presentation as sort of one of their uh, engagement phases. Uh, I know Renee was not pleased with the proposal. I thought it was not Kelsey's best work, although I thought it was okay. Um, I think the order of the slides could have been better. I think the, the emphasis, she put a heavy emphasis on the trail stuff, and I know why that is. It's because our uh, National Park Service consultants um, have had a couple of calls with them to try to make those projects match up. And because we haven't been able to do things like meet in person, I, I can just tell that the, the, that call kind of took on a life of its own and sort of flavored the presentation more than it should have. Um, so, but that's a solvable problem and, and we'll solve it. Yeah, so it, yeah, just my response was, um, I went back to our branding that, you know, these are our three emphasis is outdoor recreation, our agricultural roots and our historical sites. So let's, you know, the green and growing, it was really heavy on trails and it was just awkwardly balanced. Even if you read it, you'd, you'd realize that. So, so we're moving on to a, a meeting, I don't know, next week, whenever it is. Um, 
But I want to say it's Monday off the top of my head. What did come out of that, you trails fans out there, is that um, the trails person from the, well, I mean, the national parks person who was involved in that round robin of emails, that, oh, does does the town have a comprehensive map of trails? And I sent her the link to what's on our website. We don't have one necessarily comprehensive. And she didn't just say trails. She said of, of outdoor recreation. And I said, no, I don't believe there's a map that exists. So she volunteered that they could do that for us. So we'll have to talk about that at our um, the meeting that's coming up. What that looks like, I have no idea. but. Um, I thought that was a positive. We can come out with a, another product, but okay. Did Brian? Yeah, do that, you have a that call is mo Monday at two. No, we we were waving to Leslie. Yeah, we. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I was on the phone. Family. We thought you were eating. <laughs> well, I was eating a little bit too. That's okay. Oh, oh those are addicting. <laughs> yeah. Pass the cheez -Its. <laughs> That's what you guys have to get on your elliptical. Uh, yeah. <laughs> on mine? <laughs> yeah, I joined that. Uh, yeah, that. What is it? Daily burn. I got that going. <laughs> I did too. Yeah. I, I okay. joined the I'm not working. Cut down on food club. Yeah, that's probably better. <laughs> Cutting down on food is the good option. Cooking at home, the same thing. Yeah. All right, so what's next on our list? Um, Pop-up retail shops. What was that, Charlene? I couldn't understand that. Pop-up retail shops. Oh, uh, I have to admit, I have not looped back around to those kids in, in the last couple of weeks because I've been trying to keep a bunch of balls in the air. It, it, let me send myself a reminder via email because that's what I need. I need email prompts to get stuff done. I will do that right now. Yeah, so the, the, the last meeting we report, we reported that we had a conversation with them and they were gonna provide us with um, alternative ways to communicate with the, you know, the public, anyway. Um, so there's nothing to, to, nothing changed since the last meeting on that. So we can move on, Tara? Yeah, liter literally nothing, <laughs> not even a peep. Yeah which is surprising, but they got their hands full. I'm sure they're, are these master's level or, or uh, undergraduates? They're, no, they're, they're senior, senior undergrad. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So, you know, they have to graduate and they have to deliver this project. So Soon. I, I must presume that they, <laughs> that they are working on it. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I just sent myself an email, so I'll, I'll, That'll remind me to get in touch with them tomorrow. Okay, what's next? Um, EDC branding budget. Well, that's kind of always on there, but we will have something to report, right, Tara, based on what, uh, well, next year's, if you want to touch on what happened with next year's budget. Yeah, and, and Brian uh, Yacino knows this. Uh, unsurprisingly, Board of Finance was looking for cuts because of, you know, the, the current circumstance. So they had already taken us back to the flat 25 grand plus the intern. Um, so I sent Orla back the, a concession that we would peel out 20% from the 25, so cut that down to 20, essentially taking 20% away from each of the three major projects um, for 21. So that's the pop-up shops, uh, the interlocking projects at 65 Main, and the train wreck park. The reason that is feasible is because we're actually getting reimbursed from those two grants that are open, the TLGV and the ECAR, those funds should come in in uh, early 21, meaning early fiscal, not early calendar, 21, uh, once I have all those funds expended from the grants and then go in for reimbursement. So we get 7,500 after having given up five. So we end up two and a half ahead, which is not as good as we could have 
had things, but at least it should enable us to move forward with some stuff. Okay. I'm not happy. I, well, not, none of us were did. happy, but that was the probably that was the best I was going to do. And if I believe me, if I had left it for them to decide on their own, I'll bet you they would have cut the intern and taken twenty percent. So I think like you know. we careful. Like I don't know. I just feel like I get it. You got to cut, and everyone loses stuff. And but that's always the scenario when is it ever going to be i'm going to send and i would encourage all of us to send as a taxpayer i don't mind paying for things that i get and i'm a taxpayer just like everybody else is a taxpayer and i want nice roads and i want a nice school and i want nice sidewalks and i pay for that so we're always giving in and taking and losing stuff and we're never, ever going to be ahead. And I feel like if we mm -hmm. just keep agreeing and, well, we, well, it's better than this. and it's like, No, it isn't. We're done. I don't want to be better no, than. I want to have what we should have as a taxpayer. If we're always you know, catering to the poor, we're, then we're poor. But I, I spend my money. I give my tax money. What am I getting for that? Nothing. It's burgundy. I want something. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you on principle, Charlene, but that was not a fight we were going to win this year, for sure. So better to be proactive and, and strategic than, a lot, because if you were probably listening to it, wherever somebody hadn't suggested their own cuts, uh, Board of Finance was just going in and saying, well, let's take this. And they were lockstep, six and all, taking those funds away, whatever was proposed. There was no pushback on any kind of cut being proposed. But you no, know what? So I, I, a Zoom, I think, oh, go ahead, Charlene. A Zoom, meeting, a Zoom meeting, any kind of meeting is so <laughs> impersonal and unfeelingable that they just, they would do it because they can. But if you were sitting in a room and they had to look at you and see the passion that you have, it would be totally different. And I think that that's what they're doing. They're they're going to get away with it, but it's going to cost the town of Thompson more than what we're actually losing. And I feel like this is the trend that happens with anything that happens in Thompson. You go two steps forward and fall 15 back and we're pedaling out of everything. And then no one ever sees anything complete. And then they don't want to give us a shot. Yeah. Oh, none of that. <laughs> None of wow. that. <laughs> How do you know you can see me? Cameras on. I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Charlene, I think you're, I think you're preaching to the choir on this one. I, I think we all agree with you. Um, you know, I was, I was not the to that battle. I was disappointed that they spent so much time going budget by budget by budget not really having a lot of discussion all of these weeks and then wham bam thank you man is what aaron did i'm sorry that's exactly what he did that night he ran right through them boom like there was no discussion he just kept rapid fire this 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 and oh plus i want to add this to this um i think oh, i think charlene nailed it right on the head it's an unfair I, I uh, process. It really, really was. Almost, yeah, I think Charlene nailed it right on the head. You've got you've got a board who is, in essence, prioritizing the need to cut over the need to improve, and that that's a philosophical problem. But they're they are an elected board. Yeah, the problem uh, so the is the best we, you can do is, is play the ball. I I think we've been trying to convince them and maybe when some of these things come through, I know it's a lot, it feels like it's forever. We've been trying to convince all these boards, including Board of Finance, is that we need to finish some of these things and we need some of these, they need these funds and it's meager funds, by the way, that they give EDC um, mm -hmm. to turn things around and hopefully help that tax base and you know, help make it better for that project that Gumford's bringing in and all of that. But they totally, and understandable uh, uh, this year, but I, in some instances, I, 
it's not necessarily an excuse, but I think something's happened, um, would have, might have happened anyway, even if we didn't have COVID. That's what I'm saying. I think that kind of was the umbrella that they all used. Yep, um, everybody's using it. Charlene, Charlene, this was my first time going through this process, so I can definitely like kind of sort of, I mean, so I, don't, I don't know any different than the COVID, but I will speak to like what you said about it being impersonal, you know, um, in rec, I mean, it's a small budget and I made cuts where I felt like I could for the greater good. And I'm fine with those decisions. And like, like Tira said, I would prefer to have made those decisions. I'm glad that it was sent back to the department head and we were able to be a part of that process versus it just being cut. Um, but on the flip side of it, you know, where we didn't make cuts to, even though it's not my budget, it's Rich's budget, I was a part of that process, we didn't make cuts to the parks budget, and because we didn't make a cuts, the increase that we had asked for was cut, and I did feel like it was hard to, to share my passion or my, um, in the Zoom format, you know, had I been standing in the room, had, you know, that might have come across differently, and maybe the result would have been different, so I will agree with you on the point that the Zoom does make it difficult to, to share what you're really feeling and how passionate you are about the decisions that are being made. Just to let everybody know, they're still looking to cut a million fifty three thousand. Well, you have to get it to a to get it to a half a mil increase is what how they're in shooting the for. Kenny and all how that's in the left, world and all that's left is you can't you can't do it. But that's what they're looking for to get it to a half a mil. They've got to cut it by a million fifty-three thousand. So you they so need what, to put a budget get, out that meets the town's needs. Right, you get what you pay for. Crap. And you're not. We're going to be in the hole if they pass the town's budget. Just the town side right now. Salt sand budget is going to be thirty-five thousand dollars in the red. And they'll blame and they don't it on. See that. I don't know. I, I don't, I'm writing, uh, um, I don't, I, I'm writing and they, I want them to read it there. I'm going to put it in my thing that, you know, you, everybody goes and speaks for, you know, we can't afford this and we got to get rid of this. Well, people move out of Thompson and go places where they have nice roads and restaurants and they do that because I don't want to live in Dumpville. I'll pay for it. Like I want what I want. You, and if you want to get something for the tax dollars, you do pay. Right. And so go, I want you to go up a percent, a mill rate, knowing that I have nice roads and I want you to go up 1.5 mill rate. If I have nice roads, a nice sidewalk and a nice park and like people will pay for that. But I, we have that mentality that no one in Thompson will do it because they decide for us. We don't ever get to decide nothing. They just make that decision. They don't listen. And when you say it, they don't hear it because they, I'll tell you, they already have it set in their mind what they're going to do. And you could get up there and they're not, I've been in, I've been in the meeting and I've watched the Zoom meeting and the feeling is the same both places. There's no compassion at some, at, with some of those people at that table that I would want representing me in my town. Like, I don't feel like, they're looking for the rich people. The <laughs> only thing that they have to go back on, though, is the failure of the bu budgets. I was and just while, say that while the town has historically passed, we didn't have great uh, results last year, even on the town side. It took us a while. I mean, there were a few times that the town budget failed, and in the in Prior to that, it was they would it would pass in the school. But I would think pass. that people are failing the town budget because they're mad at the school, so they just say no to everything because they're sick of why would they pay and get nothing? So they're, it's like no, no. That's just it's easy that way because <laughs> they're getting nothing, so they'll just give you know okay, do the point five or say no, no, and do it five times. They don't really. I mean, you have to like kind of look and I, you said, well, they're looking at the past budget. Well, look at the people. Like what are the, what about the other people that want nice stuff? They got to get we their, could go on, we could go on forever and uh, we could, to... it, and, but we still have to have conversations. It's, yeah. it's important. And I think you're right. Send your, send your email. They need another perspective Yeah. because you know what, who's doing more for people who are not doing well in town, people like you. 
Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of us, a lot of people doing right. that. A lot of people, right? right. And you're still paying your taxes and you're helping those other people. They're getting more from you than they are from the town. Mm. You know, as far as keeping them going through this period. So, because, you know, yeah, there's yeah, something well, to be said. People, people. <laughs> right. All right. Um, okay. What's next on our list? Z Fold Map Brochure. Oh, that's the uh, Z. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I don't have an update because we have uh, an ERTD meeting tomorrow. I did have an ERTD meeting earlier this week, but it was to go over, uh, it was to interview candidates uh, on an RFP bid for a marketing partner. So um, we have not discussed the brochure again, although I intend to bring it up tomorrow morning on the executive committee call. Um, the, uh, you know, as I've mentioned before, every time I pull those little cards out and pass them around, everybody gets excited. The, uh, now, the ERTD has not physically handled the cards. I proposed this to them after we were already on the Zoom platform. So they haven't seen the thing, but they are generally theoretically in support. Um, I actually think I have a strong case for them to move on it. They need to expend some funds by the end of the year anyway. And by, and by year, I mean fiscal year. Um, I, I think I have a strong case to make that this is a project that they should be able to get behind right away because as a trails emphasis project, that's one of the only things people can actually do in any kind of tourism sense, staycation, you know, go to the next town over, whatever. Um, and we are better positioned right now than Mystic Village, right? Nobody can go there but you yeah. can go to the airline trail in any one of 12 towns. And uh, I sent that call for songwriter sing over to connect to, uh, to Randy five ash, who is the, uh, the guy for the, um, for tourism, for the state. He's the ex officio from the state on, on the RTD. And he thought it was super cool. So, you know, those are related talking points and I'm going to talk about them tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, so you'll At just some length, I'm sure. So if we tune into EDC, we'd be able to get a, an update on that at that meeting um, about that. Because, I would hope so, yeah. Well, you're going to, yeah, some, some decisions going to have to be made awfully quick on that. And the well, at least the commit fund, yeah. Right, so then if you're doing an RFP and a request, I mean, a request for proposals, I mean, that's, you got a short time frame is all I'm saying to get it encumbered. I mean, you got all June, I suppose. Yeah, I'm thinking the end of May, but that's not accurate. You have until the end of June. Yeah. Well, our, our funds could theoretically get encumbered to the district, right? So as long as we encumber our True. funds to the district for the project, because yeah, well. I have a feeling <laughs> that's the direction. I'd be a little nervous that, about that without a commitment, without any commitment. Well, there would have, yeah. Right, there would have to be a commitment, yes. But in terms of, uh, I wouldn't worry about the RFP because we have the option of encumbering it to the to the district right uh, once sure. the commitment is in hand yep <laughs> okay. what's the matter um, charlene i'm just laughing at one of the things on the agenda but not this next one <laughs> cycle okay. cross where's charlie is he here did i put it as like not not here the cyclocross uh, we know didn't happen this okay. year. <laughs> Is it so? Oh, well, I guess I'm confusing that with the thing that's happening in August. The uh, Ryan well, he's working on that on his own. Who, Charlie or what's his name, Rich? Richard Freeze. Well, there's two in August. Yeah, Brian just mentioned the Rymacon. So that's the end of August. We haven't talked to those people in a while. But that's right. the Hartford Marathon Foundation. Uh, you know, we can circle back to them in end of June. I think that'll be fine. They, they probably have no idea whether they can run or not. Richard Freeze was talking about that first full, or I think second full weekend in August. It was the 8th and 9th, I think. Yes. Um, uh, that more or less sounded like he was working that on his own, and eventually he was going to ask for some volunteers again. I, I will say this. I like the guy. I think he's got good ideas. 
but his follow through with us has been, let's just say less than exemplary. So if he comes to us in enough time and with enough specificity so that we can actually help him, I will help him. We will help him. If it's going to be another exercise in chasing him down, what do you mean by this? Can you be more specific? Can you tell us what the actual tasks are? Uh, I mean, I might put some effort into that, but I'm not going to kill myself over it. Right. But I mean, I think we all can, we, we can all agree if a successful event like that was to be continue to happen in Thompson, it, it would be a definite benefit. And if we can, I know, I know the struggles you've had with them. So, but he's been at two, at least two of our meetings that I've been at. And so there's some commitment there. Um, well, he I, likes us and we like him and his ideas are good. But, it, you know, it's got to be more than ideas. It's got to be a plan and in order for some, us to help him do degrees, it. He's kind of hedging his bets with Last Green Valley. I mean, which is fine. We all can partner. It doesn't need to be one or the other. But kind right. of get that feel from him. He's looking for... <laughs> the best girl to go to the dance with. <laughs> well, that's never going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's next? What are you laughing at next on the agenda? The commercial industrial banker to discuss how we can make the <laughs> more attractive to investors. That's Charlie's baby. It is. Yeah, well. I don't know. I don't know why that keeps coming up on the agenda. So can I, then you ask me to remove it. Would you like me to remove it? Yes, please. please. do. You know, I don't want to step on his toes. Oh. As long as you have a, a, in your agenda other business, you can always add something during a meeting. Okay, what's next? New business. Brand marketing strategy. So I think we got to a good place with this um, in the email meetings before this meeting. Last meeting, for those of you who weren't here, we had Jen on and we were hashing around a you know, marketing strategy plan. And it's something that's been on the agenda. It's part of the branding plan that NECOG established. And we've been kicking it around and I, I I kind of think we all felt maybe we're ready to, to see what a plan would look like. <laughs> Have somebody besides us develop a plan based on all the work that we've done already. Um, so we said, okay, Jen, submit a plan. She said something to us, which we thought, um, we, we liked her in interaction with us. We think she's done some good things in Putnam. Um, I think she's a good communicator. We can, however, in the process, you know, I, I think, we don't have anything else to compare it to and it makes sense to go out um, for requests for proposal, right? I mean, she isn't, this, she's not, Jen has got her own business, it's called Generate. She does, she is an employee of Chase Graphics, but this is a separate thing. Um, her own business, she, she is in Thompson and we like that idea too. But in order to, to get the best for Thompson, we felt, I think that to go out, um, Anyway, it was a good idea. Tara did draft something. I don't know if anybody had a chance to look at it besides me. Did you by any chance talk with Del for how she performed over there? No. I no, have not that, spoken to Del for now. No. Um, part of the proposal, this RFP was, you know, folks will send us past customers or references or whatever. So, and I did let Jen know that we, have now thought it's best for Thompson if we do an RFP. We want her to, you know, we love the idea of working with somebody local and encourage her to, to uh, put a proposal in. Um, we also shared the fact that that first part of her proposal we had done. And I thought we had communicated that to her. Maybe we hadn't, but what now she knows. There's no, there's no thought about it. We said it more than once. <laughs> well, I mean, that was part. You know. So um, the, I guess my question is, really, who should go out for the request for proposal? Really, I, I mean, shouldn't it, shouldn't it be EDC or should it be EDC branding? I'm not quite sure. I'm looking for advice. Did she give you a, a 
dollar amount on like what? She did. She did. <laughs> um, the first part of the plan, which we've already done, which is to do the uh, analysis of our strengths, our weaknesses, and all of that, that whole piece, I forget what she called it, that was about two grand in itself. Her wow. total proposal, I want to say, was 6,500. Five. Yep. Yeah, That's so we correct. Would, Where's so the that money? Would from? basically the leave money? us with 4,500. Where's uh, the money coming from? Where's it budgeted? What was that? Uh, I have, I have a budget? strategy for that. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just, just leave it at that. <laughs> strategy. So, um, well, I would say that it's whatever department it's bu budgeted <laughs> under is the department it would come from. All right. Well, I well, branding doesn't have its own budget. They have a line in EDC, so it's both, and that's kind of why funky, it becomes yeah. a gray area. Yeah. So we we can we well let's make a motion that we I, I, yeah see this is where I'm stuck. Do we suggest to to recommend to EDC that we do the RFP? Jointly, maybe it's, a, well, it's the same committee, darn it, EDC and their branding and implementation committee. We could both put both on there, um, but we, I think we would recommend to EDC that we wanna do this, correct? Yeah, that, that would work. Okay, so can I get a motion? I mean, if everybody's in favor of going forward with the marketing, I think, I think we're at the, the right place for it, but. I'm we have to keep old. moving forward yeah. without a doubt. I'll make the motion. Ken Beausoleil. And I'll second. Ryan, why seconds? Do you recommend? Okay, a, okay, all in favor of uh, making this recommendation for an RFP for a marketing strategy plan, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Hearing none, motion passes. Great. Now, did anybody have any uh, suggestions for that RFP that I drafted? Uh, Renee sent me back some and I incorporated them already. Um, you know, so we have I, I read easy it enough to make edits. What I read looked good. I just was nervous. Like when something has to go out, I feel like it goes, it's like fishing. You throw the line out there and it sits out there for three years and you, you reel it in and you don't have a fish. At least with Jen, I felt like she was there. We had it. If the fish is there, we tell her what we want and just do it. But yeah, well, I think, but I, I, I think she's still going to be there. I mean, she's just starting her business. She just got her business. Yeah. Just got her home off um, through planning and zoning. So um, she's just beginning. Actually, I think she's still in school. Yep. So, um, so just to give that some perspective, Charlene, um, I, I told you earlier in the week, I, I was on interview calls for ERTD and they had gone out to bid for a marketing partner for the entire district for the rest of fiscal 20 and into 21. And there were three responses to that proposal, one of which was the existing contractor, and then two additional contractors came in. Uh, I can tell you that the existing contractor had the worst, least responsive, and least creative proposal. And we wouldn't have been aware of these other two if we hadn't gone to that bid. Now, I'm not saying that's what will happen with Jen. It's possible that she will have the most responsive, especially if she has to go back again, since we've given her the feedback for what we want and produce something closer to our needs, she may come back with something outstanding now, but we have no idea who's out there. I mean, there are plenty of little graphic designers and, and small bore marketing firms out there. What about, um, like, and all of them are hungry for work. Rainy Morin's grandson, is that what he was doing out in college or? We could send it to Nick Morin. Yeah. Isn't I had forgotten right? about that kid, but he did a nice proposal. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, he's one of, uh, of a team and it's, I think it's a nonprofit, the, the co it's a company or that's tied yeah, to the school. Yeah. I believe. Um, I did hear, yeah, you know, so he might really not have a relationship with them anymore, but. Just another gut thing that got me thinking too, is Seth's girlfriend is involved with, that's kind of her. She's working actually as um 
oh, for what's that horticultural place in Worcester. Anyway, we were just talking about um, marketing and the branding thing and all of that. And I mean, she just mentioned, she goes, oh, this really cool company in Worcester or just outside of Worcester called New Perspective. And you, sh you, know, you should check it out. They do great. So, I mean, there's other things out there. Maybe they're not within our budget. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the, the scope of what we're doing is too small for some of them, but I'd like to just kind of explore the opportunity, you know, the. I think also what you mentioned, Tira, about, about Jen living in Thompson, you know, I mean, that's a, a big value. And, you know, once we get the RFPs in, you know, maybe that yes. plays a role and outweighs some of the other things, you know. Yeah, you can certainly weight uh, the scoring of an application if we were to do like what we did for um, the sidewalks and come up with a, a score sheet to evaluate the, you know, assuming that we even get more than one. It's possible we don't get more than one and the right. problem is solved. Right. Uh, but, but, but even if we you know, don't. Assuming that we get more than one, if you have an objective score sheet, you can weight local contractors more heavily than out of town or out of region. There's no problem with that. That's fairly standard practice. Even if we don't get someone else, at least we're getting something maybe a little more creative from her because that's, again, my initial response was it just looked like marketing 101, like she took something out of a textbook. Here's your standard. We're going to do a slogan. We're going to do a SWAT. We're going to do, th it's like we did all that already. What are we paying for here? I, I need to see more. And even if this gets her to be more creative in her proposal so we can see where she's heading, then it's worthwhile. But if someone again comes along with something more based on them having more experience and their price is competitive, well, great. Well, that's the other thing that just popped into my mind, Brian. You, you, I really loved your response. It was very, you know, it was helpful for me too in processing. And I thought, you know what, he is so right about it. That's what was kind of sticking in my mind too, is that it's very basic um, proposal. Tira, I know we put a, a, a dollar amount. Let's discuss that because are we then limiting ourselves so you know we, we're going for this proposal we may not have the money this year or maybe not next year um i, I don't because we have no idea where this money's coming from but we need to have some idea of what we need well, to budget I, for it I, I do have an idea where the money's coming from if we do it i mean i put it in as a bid not to exceed five thousand because i believe that i can shuffle some of the reimbursed funds that we get back to edc to cover that and still also supplement our projects. So that's where that 5,000 came from. But even in that, I did include a line that they optionally may include uh, essentially a, a menu of items that they could offer as add-ons. I mean, just because we say it's a bid not to exceed doesn't mean we are tied to that it means the vendor is tied to that in their proposal yeah we could the, always choose to exceed the five yes we could based on these extra these extra items so if we're asking them to provide everything in the out you know you did the rp this is boom 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 what we want for five grand they may say hmm you know this is going to be five grand and i could put th these three items that you think i can get done those are going to be more a la carte because i can't get that done for that that's the only, and I know you're, you know, I know we want something. Uh, I know we want to move forward, but five seems a low amount. I don't know about anybody, but if it's what we have, well, I, I, we do, have. I, 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 I agree that it's, I agree that it's low, but I don't think it's prohibitively low. Um, I, I, I think it limits the type of vendor you're going to be able to hire. It's going to be somebody like a gen or another, you know, one person, you know, one man shop, one woman shop, um, yeah. somebody who has low overhead. Yeah. I, I, like I say, I don't think it's prohibitive. We may discover that we get two or three or four or five bids right at the $5,000 mark and they're all equally basic. That will also be a lesson learned. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah. and if and they do include that all the cart pricing, it gives us a better sense of what is reasonable cost in the industry right now? Yeah, yeah, and it's, I mean, just because we go out and they, you know, we, they come in, it doesn't mean we have to accept any of them. So you're right. And it's realistic. It's, it's, so, all right. 
We did vote on that, right? Yep. I think so. Yeah. Was there anything else on the agenda? Members yes. comments. Okay. Well, we kind of, <laughs> I don't think we never need a special line for that, but. So any other input? <laughs> Ken, I haven't heard from um, you in a while. I'm good. Is he there right? still? Yeah, he is. He is. Yeah. Okay. Just trying to stay coronavirus free and, and that social distancing. <laughs> I'm going hey, to congratulations to everybody who helped with NIPS last weekend. Oh, I, oh yeah. How did we not bring those that numbers up? Numbers were amazing, huh? 28, yeah, 28,000 28, plus. Leslie and I are going to move them all to the shed tomorrow. Oh, speaking of which, Renee, did you ever find that key? I'm glad you mentioned it. I will look tonight. I have some NIPS um, here. I didn't turn, not 28,000, but. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I don't, I think most of you probably heard that, you know, so the 28 is basically 2,800 bucks or so we're almost 2,900 we've spent out of the 35 we've had, we have in hand. Um, Tira, you were putting some more requests out. I did call Neil Patel on Saturday right after that collection and he agreed to give us a grand. But he was You're going to have to call him again. He we're counting on him now. Yeah, he was supposed to be there Monday. Um, so the other, I mean, this is, I don't even know what committee I'm in, but we'll talk about it. The, um, so somebody did call today saying, oh, I missed the first collection. I've been, you know, I said, well, I did tell her, I said, you better get to the June one because I don't know how far beyond the June one will do. So I'm feeling that we've got to nail that down. Maybe put like yeah, a- Yeah, I, uh, I sent out two fundraising requests yesterday, one to hometown bank, and I do actually think they're going to bite. Um, and, and I asked them for like three grand. Uh, and what was the other one? Oh, and the other one was to that private plastics company up in uh, North Central Mass where I have, uh, where I have an inn, <laughs> but I have to follow around with that guy. Um, I'm going to hit other local bank chains I'll probably have to try to make some time to do it tomorrow. Webster Five. Um, I have a friend who works there in the mortgage and lending division, so he might be able to serve as an intro for me there. Uh, Putnam Bank and Charter Oak. Those are the those are the three I'd like to target. They're all going to have charitable foundations for community activities. Uh, just a matter of who's in a giving mood these days. Well, the other conversation we've had that with, within our small committee, the working committee anyway, for NIPS is. At what point do you go to that well when you may have other things you could go to that well for? If we've proven our point in three months, I know you have that whole thing going till Christmas, but if we've proven our point in three months, those dollars could be used in the community um, in right. other ways. Right. So and I, then I, I would if, be careful, Tiara. If, if you keep, if you put it on Facebook, this is how much we collected, this is how much we have, we only have X amount of money left that keeps everybody I mean, you know what'll happen, they'll stop collecting the bottles. So, because as soon as there's no money, there's, they're not picking them up. <laughs> well, I would say that I mean, most, of the, pe yeah, most of the people that came also collected trash. So they were kind of the, the people that were doing it anyway. Um, Some of them obviously were doing it to, for the money. We know that. We had one yeah. woman drive up and say, she's out of work and she is using it for that purpose. Oh, yep. Yeah. See? Yeah, I mean, we, I think we're pretty much in, in to do it for one more month for sure. I would say less than three months looks poor for us regardless. So we've got to find a way to collect all the way through June, no well, matter how much other, work that means I have thing, to do. The other thing I'm going to put out there is we have turkey trot um, on the horizon, and that's always a struggle. And Putnam Bank is one of the sponsors. Yeah, so I was just, just going to say that. I would just throw that out there, you yeah, know. I would really appreciate a no, a no ask to Putnam Bank. I was just going to say that, Renee, as we're preparing probably in the next four weeks to go after Putnam Bank for, you know, three grand. No problem. Yep. He's looking, the new bank owner was on Winnie the other morning, and he was saying that he's looking to give donations. So they gave 25000 already. Then with this COVID, they gave 25000 more to one of the charities. So Wow, big dollars. dollars name out there so maybe so I'm maybe, a, maybe maybe it's not, a joint ask. 
Then tear up. Maybe we can draft a joint letter. Yeah, or maybe don't wait for. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I would you know. I wouldn't want to see them choose nips over the the. Yeah, turkey trot. So maybe you no, go that's after fine. I can I can avoid I can avoid Putnam. I mean, you know, Webster Five is yeah. is a a pretty large regional. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And they do give to Avishan Hardware is 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 a is a New England company as opposed to a big box company. Uh, I know their lawyer. Um, you know. Okay. All right. Anything else? If not, I think we can end the meeting. Okay. All right, everybody. Good night. Good to see you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.